Alright, welcome. This is the 2.4 homework solution for the Ready, Said, Go. Alright, we have the Ready part here. It says, the first and the fifth term of a sequence are given. Fill in the missing numbers if it is an arithmetic sequence. Then fill in the numbers if it is also a geometric sequence. So, what you have here on your piece of paper, you have the arithmetic and geometric sequences. Okay. What I decided to do is to um, put the term numbers before that. right? So, that is the X. Okay, uh, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, this just helps me out because now I can um, generate my equation. Just the chart is so much easier to look at here. Okay, this is a good strategy because it gives us uh, the charts. Okay, all right. So here I'm trying to find the arithmetic sequence. So I'm using these. So my first x is one. My right with the first y as three. My second x is 5, so my second y is 48. Here you go. Plug that into the slope formula. Should get you 11.25. That means the common, the common difference for the intermediate sequence is 11.25. Same thing. Okay. Here, the third term, the first term is 3, and the fifth term is 48. So 48. 3 is the first term. 5 minus n is 4, right? Divide by 3, you get 16. Then 16 to the 1 fourth power, so r is equal to 2. So the common ratio for the geometric sequence is 2, right? Plug it back in, you get a complete uh, sequence here, right? Rather than make two tables, I made one, okay? All right, N number 2, okay? Same thing here. I put the term numbers there, right? This is referred as to my x. This is my y. And this is my y. Okay. Again, here's the slope formula to find the common difference. Okay. One is my x, so my first y is negative six hundred, negative six thousand two hundred and fifty. My second x is at 5, the second y is negative 10. So formula, plug it in, you get m equals 1560. Same thing for the explicit, all right? I'm using the fifth term, which is negative 10. My first term is negative 6,250, 6, right? My y, negative 10, first term, negative 6,250. 6, um, n is 5, so n minus 1, 5 minus 1 is 4, right? Divide by neg negative 6,250, you get 1 over 65. Take that to the 1 fourth power, r equals to 1 fifth. Plug it into the sequence here. There you go. All right. Same thing for the next one. We have this, All right? Again, same process. Okay. First x is 1, first y is negative 12, first x, second x is 5, second y is negative 0 0.5. That is how I got that. Plug into the slope formula, you should get m equals to 45 over 16, or in decimal version, you get 2.8125. Either or works for you, you can work in decimal or fraction form. Here's the explicit, okay, divide it over, you get r equals to 1 half, okay, plug it in, there you go, okay. That's the procedure you would like to see to find the geometric sequence. That is how you find the slope formula or the common difference. Okay, there you go to plug those in back into the chart. All right, next, here's the set. Okay, answer the question below with respect to the relationship between the sequence and the larger family of functions. If a relationship model is modeled with a continuous function, which of the domain choices is possible? Okay. Uh, if you don't know how to read this, you have to look at the other video that I posted, the um, set builder notation video, and it will explain how to read this. But A is the domain value that have all real numbers. B is the domain value that contains all the whole numbers. C is the domain value that contains all the integers. And D is the domain value that contains all the natural numbers. Right? Uh, that is an example of a continuous function. Okay? So the answer would be all real numbers because, again, you're allowed to use the rational and irrational numbers. Right? 
as well as the whole number and zero so it uses every single number which is called the real number okay five which of the following option is the mathematical way to represent the natural number that would be d right because right it is the set of all x's such that they are the members of the natural number there you go that is how it looks like in set notation which is d again if you need help please watch the video on the set builder notation video next which one of the following choices would be used for a continuous exponential model which one is it okay a that is the geometric recursive relationship because you see how it's multiplying by four that's the previous term here this looks like the geometric explicit equation because four is your common ratio x is the exponent and 5 is your first term c that's y equals mx plus b so that is your linear equation and d that is your arithmetic recursive relationship so again you want a continuous exponential model so you're looking for the geometric explicit equation 7 which of the following would be used for a continuous linear model okay all right the first one again that is your geometric recursive relationship B, that is your geometric explicit e equation. C would be your linear equation because it is in y equals mx plus b. And D is the arithmetic recursive relationship. So again, if you want a continuous linear model, you would use the linear equation. We have eight here. Which domain choices would be the most appropriate for an arithmetic or a geometric sequence? Right here is the straight definition of uh, this. A sequence defined as a function having a domain of natural numbers. There are two kinds of sequences. A finite sequence, uh, a finite mean it ends, right? So the domain is 1, 2, 3, 4, blah, 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 and it stops at n. It basically goes where it um, cuts off at. An infinite sequence goes on forever, so the domain is all natural numbers because it goes on to infinity, basically. Right, so that would be your domain choice. So it would be the answer of D. Uh, not natural. Um, it would be all natural numbers. Okay. Which attribute will arithmetic or geometric sequence always have? One, it is discrete because it is a sequence, like what we have defined here. There is a domain of a all natural numbers that is based on the definition from number eight. F there is something constant in our case. The arithmetic has the common difference. The geometric has the common ratio. Nine, they both have a G. They both have the recursive equation. Okay. All right, 10. What type of sequence fits best with the linear model? Okay. It would be the arithmetic sequence can be a linear mathematical model. 11. Which type of sequence fits with an exponential mathematical model? It would be the exponential mathematical model works. So the geometric sequence can be the exponential mathematical model. Okay, and we have the go now. You're going to write the explicit equation for the table and graph below. This is something you really need to know. Okay, try your best. All right, number 12. Okay, we have this chart. So I decided to use slow formula. You could do it many ways. Some students just eye this and it works. I plugged in the slope formula. I have x1 here is 2. Right, x2 here is 3, y1 here is negative 4, y2 is negative 11. Plug that in my slow formula, I got m equals to negative 7. Apply the common difference backwards. Okay, so you see how it's going down. It's subtracting by 7, so to go backwards, you add by 7. I got 0, comma 10 as the um, 0 intercept. I think I showed it here now. Yeah, okay. So the linear equation would be y equals mx, right? Negative 7x plus 10. That is the y-intercept. Again, you have to forget the y-intercept, okay? And again, that's just applying the common re uh, the common difference backwards or applying the slope backwards, okay? Let's go to 13s down here. 13, if I look at it, you see it's fraction, whole number, whole number. It's getting really big, so I know it's geometric. Okay, so I plug this into the geometric. I saw that the common ratio is 5. Okay, 2, 2 to what is 10 times 5? 10 to 50 is 5. Okay, you don't even have to set up the equation. I just did it uh, to show you, but you can just eye it here. Okay, so here you I plug it into this formula, right? The function is equal to the first term, f of 0, times r to the exponent of x. So the first term is 2 r is 5 to the uh, exponent of x 
14 here you go this looks like it is also uh, the common ratio it's going up by a common ratio of 2 so that's how it will look like so how do I find the first term right this is the f of 0 right? and this is 2 so what I did is I just apply the common ratio backwards so do you see how this is negative 20 um, negative uh, 24 to go to the next one I multiply 2 so to go backwards I have to divide by 2 so negative 12 would be the first term to get the 0 term it would be negative 12 divided by 2 it goes back to negative 6 would be the 0 term okay that's how I got this here as the zero term because again the explicit equation the explicit equation is that okay that is why I needed negative six okay go back if you would like the explanation again if you want to hear it next 15 saw so the common ratio is one-third because right you can do 3 divided by 9 that's 1 third 9 divided by 27 that's 1 third 27 divided by 81 that's 1 third all right apply apply the common ratio to find the zero term okay so to find the zero term it's the next one right so 3 times 1 third is 1 so 3 times 1 third is 1 that's for the zero term here's the geometric explicit equation you plug it in f of 0 is 1 common ratio is 1 third to the exponent of x 16 Here's your graph. What I did is I put it in paint. I found the slope, which is negative 1, down 1, across 5, which is plus 3. The y-intercept here is 0, comma 2. So again, slope here is negative 1 third. Y-intercept is 0, comma 2. Plug into the linear equation, you get y equals negative 1 third, x plus 2. Next one, here you go. I grabbed the points, 0, comma 1, right there. And the next point I saw was 1, comma 4. Right, that's how it looks like. Right, the reason I do that is the chart is so much easier to look at. Okay, um, when you deal with the exponential equation. So again, make a chart, grab two points or more. Right, these are perfectly at intersections. So I have there. So how do I go from one to four? You multiply by four. That's how I got the ratio, the common ratio of four. Okay, the first term here, zero, which is one. So plug that. That's the general equation for the geometric explicit. The first term here is the zero term is one. The common ratio is four to the exponent of x. So that is your answer. Next, again here, 18. Got the slope, right? Negative one over one. Y-intercept is zero comma one. The inner equation, y equals negative one over one, x plus one. 19, again, this is exponential. There were multiple points here, so I grabbed all of them. Plug that into my equa um, my chart, you see? Perfectly in the points here. You need to get all those points to uh, fill in your chart. Once you have your chart, then you could be able to do your math, right? How do you go from uh, 8 divided by 4 is 2. 4 divided by 2 is 2. 2 divided by 1 is 2. That's how you got the common ratio of 2. Do you see? It's so much easier when you have the chart to get the common ratio, okay? So from the graph, label your points, put it in a chart, then get your common ratio. Okay, then you could see it here. Your first term here is one. You don't really know what your zero term here is, right? It looks like one half, but don't trust it. Well, it is one half, but again, you have your first term. So this is the ex uh, explicit equation, uh, the expo exponent equation for using the first term, right? The zero term looks like this: f of n, f of zero, r to the x. Okay, that's using the zero term. But if you're using the first term, it looks like this where it's to the power of x minus 1. Plug it in. First term is 1. Common ratio is 2. You go x to the minus 1. All right. Uh, 20, same thing here. Find the slope, which is negative 3 over 1. The intercept is 0, 3. Plug it into the linear equation. OK, there you go. Next one, 21. Pretty weird. Um, I just label the points here. You could just make the chart. It's, it's kind of weird because it's decaying. Um, but we're just going to stop here, okay? All right, there you go. Those are all your homework solutions uh, for the section of 2.4. If I went too fast on any of the questions, just go back and watch it, and uh, that should clear it up. If you need any extra assistance, please let me know in class. Again, uh, if this question, because I know some of you haven't seen these, right, this notation, go watch the set builder notation video that I just posted 
and you should be good. If you have any questions, let me know.